Democrat and Republican politicians alike love investing public money into private multinational corporations. That's why Democrat U.S. President Barack Obama and Republican former Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels spent $200 million to eventually help a Russian lumber baron score a sweet deal on a failed clean energy company with U.S. military contracts. In 2009, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels returned to China with a group that included Charles Gassenheimer, CEO of battery maker Inner One Inc., who met with Wangjiang Group Corporation executive Liu Guanqiu. What resulted from that meeting was a game-changing joint venture for New York-based Inner One, whose principal subsidiary is Inner Dell the Indianapolis-based maker of lithium-ion batteries. No single individual has been more important to us than Governor Mitch Daniels, our advocate-in-chief in Washington and on missions abroad, said Enter One CEO Charles Gassenheimer at a 2010 event to announce the joint venture with the Chinese auto parts company. In January 2011, battery maker Enter One Inc. of New York and Wangjiang Group of Hangzhou, a city in the East China province of Xiejiang, agreed to form a battery joint venture in China. Besides being one of China's largest producers of universal joints, bearings, and CV joints, Wangjiang also produces electric vehicle batteries and entire electric vehicles. Under the deal, Enter One will own 40% of a partnership that expects to make 40,000 battery packs a year by 2014. The packs will be manufactured at a 553,000 square foot plant that Wang Xiang is providing in the southeastern Chinese city. In 2009, Enter One Inc. takes the lead among a group of investors that plans to inject $47 million of equity funding into Think Global AS, the Norwegian electric vehicle producer. Enter One Inc. is the parent company of Enerdel, a leading manufacturer of advanced lithium ion automotive battery systems based in Indianapolis and an existing supplier to Think Global. Think Global, whose many previous owners included Ford Motor Company after funding ran dry in 1999, was again suffering from a cash crunch in summer of 2009 after going begging in December 2008 for up to $29 million in loan guarantees from Norway's government, which was denied. Think ceased production, but in January 2009, Enter One had provided the bulk of a $5.69 million bridge loan to keep Think out of bankruptcy, although not enough to reinstate its manufacturing activities. In August 2009, Enter One announced it would purchase $18 million in common stock from Think Holdings, the Norwegian LLC owner of Think Global. By the end of September 2009, Enter One reported to the Securities and Exchange Commission that it had purchased $7.4 million worth of stock. The deal gave Enter One a 31% stake in Think. Enter One owns Think Global, the electric car maker. Enter One owns Enter Dell, the battery supplier to Think Global. Back home again in Indiana, state and local economic development incentives for Enter Dell are valued at $69.9 million which comprises a state incentive package of $21.3 million and Hancock County package valued at $48.6 million. The Hancock County Council approves a roughly $30 million tax break for Enerdale's facility in Mount Comfort, Indiana. The Hancock County facility opened in 2010 to great fanfare, even prompting a visit from Vice President Joe Biden. Enerdale has also applied for an additional $9 million from federal government development programs. A Russian bank lends Enter One up to $100 million, accepting 40% of the company's stock as collateral. Enerdell tapped the country's top scientist at Argonne National Lab in Illinois, and U.S. taxpayers pledged up to $118 million in federal stimulus funds and $80 million in state and local incentives to help Enter One produce cutting-edge battery technology for electric cars and the U.S. military. With unemployment peaking above 20%, Elkhart, Indiana was at the white-hot center of the economic meltdown and a natural launch point for President Obama's electric vehicle initiative. So that's why I'm here today, the president said in 2009, to announce $2.4 billion in highly competitive grants. 
Republican Governor Mitch Daniels was also on board in convincing Norwegian company Think Global to open a plant in Elkhart to build Think City electric cars with a sticker price of about $42,000. As incentive, the federal government offered Think City $17 million in stimulus tax credits. Oslo-based Think Global, a Norwegian electric car company whose primary model is a two-seater called the Think City, was to produce its glorified electric scooters at a revamped recreational vehicle plant in Elkhart, Indiana, a plan that was also endorsed and supported by Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels. Think's economic development goals were closely linked to those of Indianapolis-based Enerdell, which was to produce lithium-ion batteries for the Think City. Ener One, the parent company of an electric car battery maker that was awarded a $118 million grant from the Energy Department in 2009 as part of President Obama's economic stimulus package and Green Energy Bush, filed for bankruptcy protection in January 2012. The filing came exactly a year after Vice President Joe Biden visited an Enter One manufacturing plant in Indiana where he proclaimed the company was the start to reshaping the way Americans drive and the way Americans power their lives. Alex Sorokin, the CEO for lithium-ion battery manufacturer Enter One, said the company suffered when demand for batteries dropped as fewer Americans than expected opted for electric cars. In retrospect, it may be that a 10-year-old design for a plastic-bodied two-seat electric mini car was not what the U.S. market wanted, especially at a list price of $35,495, higher than that of a brand new 2011 Nissan Leaf, which had twice as many seats, twice as many doors, a longer range, and a known brand name. The cars are being liquidated following the bankruptcy of Think Global and the shutdown of Think's U.S. assembly plant located in a former RV plant in Elkhart, Indiana. A New York federal judge signed off on a $4.2 million settlement between Enter One Inc. and a consolidated class of shareholders suing the lithium-ion battery manufacturer over its failed investment in Norwegian electric car maker, Think Global. The shareholder class had alleged that Enter One failed to disclose that Think Global's sales were falling short of expectations and that the company was accumulating large amounts of unsold inventory, key factors contributing to a $73 million write-down in 2011, according to the complaint. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission announced that it has settled with three former executives at electric car battery manufacturer Enter One Inc. and a Price Waterhouse Coopers LLP accountant regarding the company's overstatement of revenues. The agency primarily attributed the violations to failures by Enter One's management, specifically former CEO and Chairman Charles L. Gassenheimer. The SEC ordered Gassenheimer to pay a $100 thousand dollar civil money penalty. After a series of financial blows, Enerdell recently consolidated its Greenfield plant with one in Indianapolis, leaving the facility in the Mount Comfort Business Park absent of any activity. Enerdell CEO Michael Canada tells the county council the company is no longer operating out of the Mount Comfort facility. The Hancock County Council moves to terminate Enerdell's tax break. Democrat President Barack Obama and Republican former Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels dedicate $200 million to bankrupt battery maker Enter One and bankrupt electric vehicle maker Think Global. Dozens of Republican lawmakers, including one-time vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan, asked for hundreds of millions of dollars in grants and loan guarantees under the Recovery Act for clean energy projects in their districts. But that was before it became a political strategy to exploit the failure of innovative companies in order to win an election, says Climate Progress. Unlike bankrupt Solyndra, the advanced solar panel maker that became a lightning rod for critics of Obama's stimulus spending when it closed its factory and liquidated, Enter One promised its business will proceed as usual. This is the Aftermath, a premium luxury sedan born from the ashes of the Fisker Karma, 
a Tesla rival that wowed the automotive world before collapsing into bankruptcy three years ago, will soon begin rolling off a production line at California's newest car factory. Karma Automotive joins Tesla on a list of locally based car and bus manufacturers, including Faraday Future, BYD, and Ativa that together are making California ground zero for the electric vehicle market. Like those companies, Karma is backed by Chinese money. The bankrupt Karma's assets were purchased in 2014 by Wang Xian Group, a Chinese auto parts giant that also owns A123, the battery company that produced power packs for the Fisker cars. The sale of A123 Systems, which was awarded a $249 million federal grant and tens of millions in tax credits from Michigan, has been the subject of intense political debate, with military leaders and politicians arguing that U.S.-funded technology should not be transferred to a foreign company. At the auction held in Chicago, Johnson Controls Inc. of Milwaukee and NEC Corp. of Japan teamed up in an unsuccessful effort to top the bid of Wang Jiang Group Corp., a Chinese auto parts maker whose North American headquarters is in Elgin, Illinois, said Charles Gassenheimer, president of Carnegie Hudson Resources Capital, a New York private equity firm, and strategic advisor to Wang Jiang. The Wenjiang purchase of A123 marks the second major foreign purchase of a U.S. battery company backed by Department of Energy funding. Gassenheimer, for instance, previously was chief executive of Enter One, a battery maker with operations in Indiana that was snapped up in another bankruptcy by Boris Zingarevich. Think Global now has a new owner. Russian lumber baron Boris Zingarevich, who was also the majority shareholder in Enter One, which had a stake in Think. A little more than a year after Biden's visit to Enter One's Indiana manufacturing plant, the company's technology is owned outright by Boris Zingarevich, a Russian businessman with ties to Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, a fact that concerns some technology experts in the U.S. Zingarevich acquired Enter One out of bankruptcy March 30, 2012, with an agreement to infuse $81 million in financing, giving him a sophisticated line of batteries that can power electric cars, store electricity for power grids, and supply portable power for soldiers. In the case of Enter One, neither the Department of Energy nor the Navy checked on foreign ownership before awarding the company grants and research and development contracts. The Army, which also awarded contracts, said individual employees underwent routine background checks as contractors, but scrutinizing the company's ownership structure was not part of its purview. Purdue University hosted a Midwest forum in June 2016 that will help guide the U.S. Department of Energy's Regional Clean Energy Innovation Partnerships. The program is part of Mission Innovation, a global effort established last year when 20 countries, including the U.S., committed to doubling their funding for clean energy over the next five years. The $110 million proposed plan is highlighted in President Barack Obama's energy budget for fiscal year 2017, which calls for $7.7 .7 billion dollars in discretionary funding for clean energy research and development. The program is right up Indiana's alley, according to Lieutenant Governor Eric Holcomb, who spoke at the forum. We're overly interested in these private-public partnerships, he said. We are doing everything we can think of to speed the delivery to the world, to society, to the marketplace of any new technologies that rise on this campus through any of the myriad collaborations that we have, Purdue President Mitch Daniels said. Democrat and Republican politicians alike love investing public money into private multinational corporations. That's why Democrat U.S. President Barack Obama and Republican former Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels spent $200 million to eventually help Russian lumber baron Boris Zingarevich score a sweet deal on a failed clean energy company with U.S. military contracts. Enter One calls it business as usual.